quarter one is in the books, guys. We're going to jump in, look at the Pluralock uh, financial statement, or at least the financial summary. A few highlights to take away for you guys. Margin increases uh, in a big way. Uh, a renewed focus on their critical services business, uh, as well as their cost-cutting initiatives, uh, really do show up in the financial statements on the bottom line. Uh, guys, Pluralock is uh, traded under the ticker symbol PLCKF. Uh, it's a company that I cover on the Independent Investor Channel. Uh, I am paid on behalf of Pluralock to provide services uh, like this to uh, be made aware of what Pluralock does, the opportunities that could potentially exist around Pluralock, and and provide awareness to uh, the specifics of what they do in their business. All disclaimers will be provided in the description below for your perusal. Um, I have read through the financial report. Uh, I am bullish on the company. I have not yet taken a position. I've had a buy order in uh, for 25,000 shares of the company. Um, and we will continue to monitor this. Uh, I do intend on taking a position. Uh, I don't currently at the time of filming this video uh, but some of the highlights from the financials led me to believe that this company is on the precipice of some really interesting turning points in the company, turning that impressive top-end revenue of $70 million at just over a market cap of $13 million. Uh, into a company that is self-sustaining uh, and and looking to turn the corner um, on some po uh, positive bottom line uh, profits with the company. We will continue to monitor the progress, but I uh, do want to jump in and provide you some clarity on um, e each line item that I found uh, should be a focus for you guys if you are interested in the company uh, and invite you to uh, the company's website. I'll provide links to that as well as uh, the financial summary used in the making of this video uh, in the description and the comments section below. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, please enjoy. So welcome into the Pluralock Security Inc. reports first quarter for 2024 uh, this report, I'll uh, make a link for you guys uh, in the description below. This is very telling. Um, this is uh, very bullish for the company. There's a lot going on in the report here, so I thought it best to just kind of skim through this, make it available for you. Um, you will miss things through this review of what I think this company's doing. Uh, I would encourage you to garner your own interpretation about what Pluralock does, where they're seeking to put pressure on their different segments of their business. They've got some legacy businesses that are, are still turning back some, some good uh, top-end revenue. However, their special critical services growth is, is nothing uh, short of remarkable. Uh, for a company that uh, is trading at around 13 million market cap, I I don't quite understand the disconnect, uh, but then again, I've I've uh, learned over the years to uh, accept the uh, imperfections in the market. Pluralock is is no stranger to that application, and I I think when word starts to get around here um, that Pluralock is is staring down. Um, some some really interesting tells in this financial report uh, specific to EBITDA revenue. Um, their revenues are impressive enough. Their top end growing significantly. Uh, their special services or critical services businesses as, as that grows um, really sets up for an intriguing back half of 2024. Are we going to be discussing a company that um, has turned the corner here um, and narrowing the company losses is, as well as um, improving upon the uh, the EBITDA revenue uh, in this report. Does that shape up to, to um, give us some insight on what to expect going forward? So we're going to review this, guys. I encourage you to review it. Uh, I, I took it as, as really a call to Invest a little bit. I've already had a buy order in the company at 25 cents. I, I failed to meet that by micro fractions of a penny. Uh, just to take take a starter position in the company, as as I do believe that the fundamentals that I've able to review here uh, shows a company that is um, making a real penetration in the cybersecurity business as a whole. 
but winning contracts one after another here in a business that does in fact cater to um, companies of all size. Um, cybersecurity is alive and well. Uh, Pluralock is um, doing its part to win its fair share of, of business and uh, really provides a, a critical service to the companies it serves and uh, provides them an opportunity to get rooted in with those companies that they serve and, and uh, turn even new business into a existing and longstanding businesses for uh, for what they do, especially along their critical services. But the critical services growth of 66% uh, to 1 million in Q1 from uh, 600,000 in, in Q1 of 2023 really speaks to the growth there uh, in their critical services business. One key highlight that I picked, um, gross margins improving, um, absolutely incredible. Um, some particulars about the company there, uh, t uh, trading under the ticker symbol PLCKF. Those uh, specifics I will provide to you guys uh, in the description below, but key business milestones for the Q1. Gross margins increased 21.9% Q1 2024 and 136 in Q1 2023. So a marked improvement to the gross margins uh, really uh, accredited to their renewed focus on the critical services business, which is a significantly higher uh, margin business than their um, uh, their hardware businesses and their their legacy businesses again that that are making great great money, uh, but I think it's uh, important to note that they're focusing on those real money makers for the company as they uh, look to broaden their earnings potential across their portfolio uh, of services and um, uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, services that they provide. Uh, services increased sixty six percent. Driven by PureLock's focus on critical services, we talked a little bit about that and adjusted EBITDA. Talked about that improved uh, the loss to a mere four hundred thousand in Q1. So very cool stuff from a loss of a million uh, from stronger margins and cost containment versus the prior year, which is another bullish statement. We'll get into that a little bit, but uh, some of the highlights here. Uh, I'm not going to read through this, but I, I do want to skim over. Um, some of the particulars here in the report, you're going to have to read this for yourself. Um, uh, cash on hand, still healthy. Uh, it has dropped a little bit. No problem. I'm not concerned at all about that. I, I really think we're at an impasse with the company uh, to, to really exploit um, their ability to stand on their own two feet and uh, not have to go to public markets here. Uh, look at this. Uh, first quarter fiscal 2023 highlights their winning contracts hand over fist, multi million dollar contracts. I might add, very very impressive. Uh, 4.7 million U.S. public library, 2.5 million cybersecurity sale order to the hospital system. I talked about this in my preliminary business. These guys are winning business all over the place. So. Uh, kudos to Ian and, and the team there. Um, Ian Patterson, the CEO, is really marshalling a phenomenal project here, and 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 you know to be pulling in top end revenue of over seventy million dollars is really quite impressive, and 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 marching toward that potential uh, self sustaining uh, positive uh, EBITDA is is looking more um, in sights than ever before. Um, no guarantee to future results here, guys, but the, the, the financials is really where it gives you that, uh, that opportunity for those insights. So you can see here, uh, uh, the revenues, uh, you know, did, did decrease a little bit year over year, but it, it's how that revenue was made. Look at that gross margin increase, uh, from 2023 and 2024 sequentially. And then there's the EBITDA reduction in loss there. Uh, marching from 1.2 million of losses to, to uh, just shy of four and a half, uh, 450,000. You know, where is that going to end up next quarter? Uh, guys, I'm not here to be a forecaster. I'm just here to project the numbers to you. But that is a bullish sign that this company has really, really turned the corner. Um, there's the 609 uh, in, in the bank of cash. Again, I don't look at that as, as necessarily being a, a huge headwind for the company because if they can continue to maintain and improve upon 
um, those revenues that, um, uh, that, that are sported here in the financial statements. The sky is the limit for the company. And what, what an amazing opportunity to get in. Those are the three businesses that I spoke about, their revenue generating streams, hardware and systems uh, it, it definitely did decline. But again, lower margin businesses there with a, a, a decline in software as well from 2.7 to 1.6. However, the, the governing theme here and to highlight the 609 in revenue to over a million dollars in the professional services is what drove that business. So I, I don't care how they make uh, that that revenue as long as they're keeping more of that revenue in-house, okay? So top end really doesn't mean anything unless they're bringing home that money and these margins speak to that take-home uh, revenue on the top end. So very, very exciting times as we, we review the financials. Um, it, it certainly was a bullish uh, sentiment for me to review this, where the company is, where it's been, and, and especially where it's going. We'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the financial summary for Q1. Uh, how does it stack up? Where does the company go from here? Uh, is there themes that you can derive to show that the company is on the right track? I believe that we've outlined some specifics about the margin improvement, the focus on the critical services business, as well as their cost-cutting initiatives to provide some clarity on where this company is, but more importantly, where this company could potentially go uh, in, in an addressable market in the cybersecurity that is hungry uh, for the services like uh, what Pluralock uh, has to provide to the customers that they serve. And once they exercise upon these incredible contracts that uh, Pluralock has a phenomenal track record of knocking down, it's amazing how sticky that business is and their ability to get in the door and and, and really win over uh, these customers to not be short-term, but rather long-standing customers uh, under the Pluralock uh, uh, envelope of customer base. Guys, if you appreciate the information coming through the Independent Investor channel, please subscribe to the channel. I'd invite you to do so. Hit the notification bell. Leave your comments at the bottom of each each video. Uh, we'll talk about um, what you think of uh, the, the the Q1 uh, statement, the uh, summary of financial uh, direction that Pluralock is headed in, and we'll continue to report out on the company. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this update on the Q1 uh, Pluralock financials. Stay tuned for more, and good luck in your investment future.